Hey guys, what's up, what's up, what's up? How's everybody doing? Ready for a Sunday show? Everybody in good spirits today, hopefully. I hope you guys are doing awesome. Can you guys just let me know if you can hear me okay? I think everything's good on my side. Perhaps my guitar is a little bit too hot. Let's see if I can just lower this a little bit. How's that? Better? Can you guys hear me? Uh, let's see, let's see. Who's in the house today? We got a, quite a few people already here. Good morning. So welcome to uh, Addicted to Gear. I'm Tony. You guys know that already. Uh, Addicted to Gear is all about um, all, the ultimate destination for all things music, where we dive into the world of sound, tone, gear, uh, everything that makes the world go round. <laughs> Today we're uh, going to be exploring a topic close to everyone's um, heart, I think, if you're a guitarist. Uh, we're going to be talking about the effect uh, taking a break has on you if you're playing guitar. Um, we all know that, you know, sometimes life gets in the way. We're not always able to play as much guitar as we would like to. Other obligations, family, work, you know, other things get in the way sometimes. Um, you know, so we're going to be talking about how that affects you, how, you know, how you feel after a long hiatus. What's the longest you've ever been without actually touching your guitar? I know it's a scary thought, <laughs> but uh, I think we've all been through that for one reason or another. So we're going to be talking about that. Um, and, uh, you know, it's going to be a fun hour or so, maybe a little more. So grab your favorite axe, adjust your amp settings, and uh, let's take, let's dive in, you know, let's not waste any time. Oh. <laughs> My co-host today is this lovely Strat. This is a, a road-worn Strat uh, that I've owned for a while now. And it feels so good, man. It just, it just feels so good. So I'm gonna be playing this on and off a little bit today. Get the fingers working. Get the, the mojo rise in as uh, Jim Morrison one said I wonder what he meant by that I wonder what he was referring to does anybody know <laughs> if you guys know put it in the, the comments let's have a couple of giggles alright um, for those of you who don't already know and have only been here once or twice addicted to gear means that everybody needs to participate that's the goal of our Sunday shows is to have a um, a round table discussion so we don't want any lurkers we don't want anybody just lurking in the background that's no fun so if you're here today and you're new let us know say hello don't be shy nobody bites and uh, at the same time welcome if it's your first time if you're in the chat room and you don't know why you can't chat is because you have to subscribe to the channel first so subscribe and you will be able to to chat, okay? So don't waste any time, let's jump right in. Um, I'm gonna start looking at some of the comments and whatnot, I'll be jumping around myself in the comments. And if you have any questions direct directly to me, please put a question mark before, your, 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 before you type out your question so I know that it's for me and not for the, the, the crowd at large, all right? All right, so I'm doing great. I'm excited to be here today. Um, I think that, um, it's been overall a decent week for me. Um, I'm feeling good. Um, I'm enjoying my gears and guitar and uh, my guitars, plural. I gotta remember to say plural. Um, and at the same time, we're already up to show number 204, believe it or not. So there's a lot more to live shows coming your way. So if you uh, are free Sunday mornings and you wanna participate in this uh, live chat, just put a circle that date, circle your Sunday mornings on your calendar so that you know when the show is happening. I usually try and send out a uh, pre-notice so nobody's caught off guard. Sometimes people get it, sometimes they don't, but YouTube is what it is. 
Um, so John says um, he wrote Mr. Mojo Rising on a board and said, look at this. He moves the letters around and it was an anagram for his name. Ah, oh, so that's what it was. Is it an anagram? I would have to work that out. <laughs> if that's a cool story, if that's a true story, it's pretty cool. Shane says, Professor, holy crap, we got to celebrate, celebrate, Tony. Call in the strippers. <laughs> what are we calling in strippers for? And uh, you don't need to celebrate to call in strippers, by the way. Yes, rest in peace, Dickie Betts. Uh, Dickie's gone. Oh, man. Time does move on, eh? Isn't time a... Time's a real hard pill to swallow sometimes. Uh, we're losing some really great people. Um, legends. Uh, how many of you are big Dickie uh, Betts fans here? I think a lot of guitarists generally are. Uh, I don't think there's a lot of people that play guitar that don't know who Dickie, Bet Dickie Betts is as long as... Uh, I mean... In a certain age group, perhaps the young the youngins don't necessarily know who Dicky was, but um, yeah, it's a shame. It's a real shame. May you rest in peace. Um, what can you do? You know, let's let's remember the great music and be appreciative of all the great stuff he left us, so we can listen to some great music for as long as we want and remember Dicky. Shane says we're celebrating National Strat Middle Pickup Day. Is that what it is today? Okay, let's put it in the middle then. I don't know what sounds best. Bridge? Middle? Or, or uh, neck? Let's take a little... Um, Pull here. Neck, middle, middle, or bridge. What do you guys think? I like all of them. But what do you guys think? Dickie was a monster player. I think he was, um, you know, I, I think he was underrated. You know, I think he got, his uh, spotlight was a little blocked over time by all of the other players that were out there at the same time as he was. But if any of you appreciate that kind of music, he, de he definitely was one of the top players in his class. So I think um, he definitely left us with a whole bunch of great music that we can really, really enjoy. And if you haven't ever listened to Dickie, go out and listen to his stuff, man. It just sounds uh, so good. He's got so many great little licks and great little ideas. Uh, Randy says, the neck. <laughs> Presley says, the neck. It's me, Don P says, the neck. Yeah, I kind of like the neck too. It sounds... <laughs> Sounds fuller when I don't have the tone turned down. I like the... I like the fact that you still have a little bit of... Some spank in there. But the, the middle's not bad. But I, I think the neck uh, definitely gives a little bit more oomph. Blue Sky was one of the first songs I learned as a guitar player in the 80s. And uh, David says, I just put a DS duck bucker in one of my strats a while back and it's been, it's become very useful. A duck bucker. I'm not familiar with the duck buckers, Davis. What is that? It's uh, Seymour Duncan makes those. 
Marcel, thank you, buddy. Thank you for reminding people to uh, hit the thumbs up. I hope you're doing well, man. Thinking about you, dude. Who can't like Dickie? Yeah, I think Dickie's definitely very unique and one of a kind and will be sorely missed. Uh, I know I'll, I'll miss him. It's getting to the point where now you're, you're, you're cherishing the music a little bit more. That's, you know, when, when your favorite guitarists or some amazing guitarists leave us for the hereafter, they leave a legacy of great music. And I think that music becomes even more important to us because we know that that's it. There's no more after that, you know? So I think we, we appreciate it a little bit more. It's like a fine wine. You know, you drink it slow kind of thing. Um, so that's how I feel about it. Uh, Earl, nice to see you, buddy. Earl, you knew I haven't seen you here before. At least I don't recognize your avatar. Welcome, man. Don't be shy. Jump in on the chat. Um, it's a rail pickup that emphasizes the oink of the mid-range. Duck or quack? Yeah, I definitely enjoy single coil strat pickups that do have that quack. I think the quack is very important. It's, it's the element that makes a strat a strat. So I think uh, without having that quack, strat's not really a strat in my opinion. And there are some pickups that won't do it. Uh, I didn't say hi to everybody, so I'm just going to go and say hi to a few people here. Profile Productions, Cushman, Paul, um, Ben, good morning, Time Surfing Alien, nice to see you. I'm just looking at the, I'm reading through some of the comments as well. Randy, Eddie, Mark. Mark says, um, my gigs... I'm preparing uh, for are my solo acoustic gigs where I play 90s rock and grunge covers. Sounds like a lot of fun, Mark. A lot of cool things to play in the 90s. How many gigs do you do a week? Sounds like you're pretty busy there. Um, John ZD351 says, I'd like a strat under my tree. Not like last year, I made a typo and sent my letter to Satan and found some real evil, <laughs> real, real evil shit under the tree. <laughs> Too funny, man. I twisted up, um, I twisted one up and made some fresh coffee and he's already says Kush, man. All right, good, good. Wayne says, hi, kids. All right, nice full house, good. Uh, if you guys have any gear-related questions, let's get those out of the way. Uh, Eddie has a question here. He says, Tony, order all the parts from a, for a Wormuth build HSS Hardtail Strat. Hopefully, it will be here before the end of summer. What is the... Um, did they mention, Eddie, what the, uh, the wait time is on their stuff? I don't know. I guess it depends on what you're ordering, right? <clears throat> if you're... If you're order I know they have... Um, they have a, a, like a quick order section. I forget what they call it. Uh, I forget. What, I haven't been on the Wormuth side in a long time. But they had uh, they have some stuff that's already set to go. And then they have the, the, the bodies and stuff that are made to order. So if you're ordering a body and uh, custom colors, custom features, then I assume it's a long wait. But Eddie, it's cool, man. Because you know, when you're waiting for something, it's there's something to look forward to. You know, it's like Christmas is coming. I'm gonna get that gift. So it's always exciting to go to your mailbox and see if it's arrived today or not, right? Very cool, very cool. Alex says, I love your candy apple red telly in the background. Thanks, man, that's the one I built. That's the little rocker. I had a, a couple of videos on that build. I don't know if you saw that. You're welcome to take a look at them. Mark says, nice strat. Thanks, dude. And Steven says, good morning. I'll be in and out, still moving stuff down the street. I'll catch the full show tonight. Have a great day. Hey, Steven, let us know when you're all snuggled in your new place, man. Uh, that's pretty exciting, too. Have a new place all ready to go. Brand spanking new. 
you got to figure out where you're going to be putting all your guitars in there, which room is going to be dedicated to the guitar studio. Randy says he always sounded like Dickie and that's what that's cool with me. Yeah, I think a lot of there, there's um there was there was I say was because I think a lot of the sometimes more of the, the modern players tend to sound more like other players. But back in the day, it was I think everybody was striving to achieve their own sound. And Dickie definitely had his own sound going on. And I think that's what made him unique and stood apart from all the rest. And, uh, you know, I, I, I respect that. I respect people that search for their own sound. Like You don't want to sound like everyone else, right? By the way, Eddie, uh, regarding that Warmoth build, um, what color is the guitar? What did you choose as a, as a body and a top? I don't know if you um, mentioned it last time or not. Is it gonna be like a, a super strat type deal? Some kind of like a sir, custom sir or something like that? Rexomatic, nice to see you buddy. Rexo is in Phoenix. He says uh, he enjoyed re-watching the Get Back film and seeing what chord positions the guy's hands went to as they were just uh, talking while holding various guitars. Yeah, that's a nice, interesting um, interesting point of view. So what did you, um, what's your takeaway on that? What, what position was the most obvious to you? Mississippi Blue says, hi, Addicted to Gear and everyone, new guitar day. Tomorrow, PRSSE, Swamp Ash Special. Wow, man. Congratulations. Iridius Blue, is that how you pronounce it? I like these cool names they come up with. You know, they can't just say blue, right? They have to say Iridius Blue. I don't know what an Iridius Blue is, but uh, any thoughts on these latest PRSs? Um, look, man, um, I think they all look really cool. I like PRS guitars. I, I've said it before. I do have a few of my own. I've never been disappointed really with a PRS guitar. Um, I mentioned last time, I think the only time I was really disappointed with one was an early version of a Tremonti that I, that I bought on a whim. It was used. And the early versions, the, at least the one I got, was kind of dead sounding. It didn't have... Um, very much um, just liveliness to the guitar. You know, sometimes you just play a guitar, you strum it, and it doesn't feel like it's vibrating with you. Something's not not right, you know? It's kind of dead sounding. And I, I sold that guitar immediately. I, I think I didn't even have it for a week, and I sold it. But that's an old version. It's an early version. I believe, I'm pretty sure the new stuff is a lot, lot better. And um, that, that probably was an early early run. I, I'm pretty sure the new Tremontis are nowhere like that. Actually, I tried one recently and it didn't sound dead at all. Uh, and all of the PRSs that I have, uh, including the SEs and the core models, all are amazing. Uh, very good quality in terms of um, production. Um, haven't, at least I've been lucky enough not to have any issues. I have a Silver Sky also. It's back there in, uh, in, my, in my stand right uh, there, this, you can't see, it's right behind my, my Tokai, which is also a great sounding guitar, by the way. Uh, definitely more Strat sounding, of course, because it emulates a Strat, right? I think you're gonna be very happy with your guitar, man. Don't sweat it, you're gonna enjoy it. Profile Productions, I knew this question was gonna come up. Tony, did you finish your amp? <laughs> I'm embarrassed to say not yet, um, but I, but guys, I promise, pink, pinky promise, I'm giving you a, a pinky promise, I'm going to be finishing that amp uh, very shortly. I'm, I'm going to try to finish it before the end of, uh, of May. That's my promise to you guys, okay? Before the end of May, you guys are going to be seeing some, some videos on that uh, Princeton hand-wired amp that I'm, that I'm building, okay? Uh, I know, I'm sorry, I've been very lazy and lackluster when it comes to finishing that project. 
I've just got, I get distracted by shiny things and uh, trying to make additional content and the whole, you know, the whole nine yards distracts me enough that I've put that aside and I haven't found the time to actually finish it. But I will, I promise. You can hold me to it. Shane says, uh, what string gauges are you using these days, Tony? Does it change uh, by the instrument? Not really, man. Uh, the string gauges I have don't, don't vary all that much. They don't vary all that much. Uh, actually, I just did a string change on one of my guitars yesterday. Typically, um, I was using these, which are uh, regular slinkies, 10 to 46s, uh, but I don't use the 10s anymore. I actually went back down to 9s. So nowadays, I use the, the hybrid slinkies, these. 9 to 46 uh, or I'll use the super slinkies which are also 9s but they're 9s to 42 so the hybrid have uh, thicker bottom strings the regular uh, slinkies have um, less fat bottom strings um, that's what I'll, I'll usually go to sometimes I, I even I've even tried the 9.5s which I liked quite a bit and I have a couple of these that I haven't actually tried yet and I'm uh, waiting these are uh, Rev Rev Willie's Mexican lottery brand fine electric guitar strings check out the gauge on this thing sevens man sevens 38 I'm scared to put these on my guitar, to be honest with you. <laughs> sevens, I've never actually played sevens. I don't even know if I'm gonna snap it the first time I try and bend a string. Have any of you out there ever tried sevens? I tend to go heavy on, uh, heavier gauge on my acoustic guitars. Uh, do I have acoustic strings here? I must have a set someplace. Um, Sometimes I, I just throw everything in a box and it gets mixed up, but uh, I think I have a set here someplace. Ooh, I have these, uh, Ernie Ball. These are um, Earthwood phosphor, phosphor Bronze uh, strings. These are for acoustic, these are 12s. Quite a bit thicker, 12s to 54s. Uh, I usually put heavier strings on my acoustics. I don't know, Eddie. What makes you think I won't like the sevens? I think they're going to be too slinky. I think what's going to happen is I'm going to overshoot a lot of the bends. That's what happens when you change the the uh, the string gauge on your guitar. You end up, you know, you end up going sharp. See, that's kind of sharp. It's hard to bend. And get yeah, and get dead on the note without being flat or sharp. David says I tried eights long ago and my guitar felt like a toy. It all depends what you're used to, uh, Davis. If you're used to thicker gauge strings and all of a sudden you go down a couple of gauges, it is it is uh, you do need to get adjusted to the new um, the new string gauges. And I, and I don't like to change my string gauge all that much because then you have to kind of readjust everything. You gotta readjust the neck. Um, I tend to do a, a whole setup around the string gauge. You got to readjust, re also readjust the intonation on the guitar and stuff like that, which I usually do anyways when I change strings most of the time. But yeah, it's a whole process. Me too, man. Seven scare me. I always think that you know that it's gonna snap. John says, Tony, uh, try it, Tony. A seven should hit pitch under much less tension, so shouldn't want to snap. I know, I mean, uh, I, I don't, I haven't decided which guitar I should put those on. Like, I don't think I want to put sevens on a Les Paul, but, you know, Billy has them on a Les Paul. Maybe I should put them on a Les Paul. I don't know. What do you guys think?
Rexo says John uh, seemed to hang out down in the middle of the neck, just a light fluid movement, thin fingers rotating between chords, looked like some sixths and seventh chords. I think a lot of people normally will do just like a, like something like this, or a. You know, chords like. I mean, what's your what's your preferred chord, man? You guys normally just strum strum the open chord, or do you do the closed? Hybrid, hybrid chords. Sorry, my mic's in the way. I know. I love the the Jimmy Page chords. I love the fact that he uh, integrates the open strings with the closed strings, you know? There's a lot of great... Uh... There's a lot of great Jimmy Page chords, man. If you want to learn some great chords that he uses, especially with the open tunings and stuff like that. Crazy stuff. Kushman's thinking of going to nines. He uses tens. I think one gauge down doesn't make a huge difference. And you can probably adjust. At one point I was playing 11 gauge strings and, uh, and also 12 uh, gauge strings back in the day when I was more into Stevie Ray, Ray Vaughan. I bought into the whole thing where you need to have uh, thicker gauge strings to get better tone. Very difficult to bend strings when you're playing with 11s or 12s. So at a certain point I just said, forget that, I'm just going back to 9s. Yeah, uh, exactly. Uh, Billy Gibbons plays sevens. Yeah, these are these are his brand of strings. These are the, that's the one I was showing you. These guys here. These are the sevens. Rev Willie's Mexican Lottery brand. That's uh, Billy Gibbons' brand of strings. I don't know who makes them. Probably just probably made by Ernie Ball. <laughs> it's probably just private labeled for him. Dan likes the super slinky nines. Yeah, I like the same. I like the slinkies too. I like the, sl the super slinkies. I got a box here. I, I alternate between the super slinky, the hybrid slinky. You know, those are the ones I I, I generally go to. Strat Strux says, "Hey Tony, what's your preferred guitar neck shape and profile?" Um. That's such a vast question, very hard for me to answer. The reason is because I have probably one of each. I like them all. Um, you know, I haven't really found a neck profile that I felt was like, no, I can't work with this. You know, there are, there are thicker necks. I don't like, this is what I don't like. I don't like guitar necks that have, um, wider shoulders if you can understand what i mean like if it's a c shape i prefer a c as opposed to a d that has wide shoulders but if the d doesn't have wide shoulders it's comfortable too so it really um it really doesn't bother me in terms of i'm not a huge fan of super thin necks like you know these wizard necks um you know some ibanez guitars have these really really thin necks I'm not a huge fan of those. I can play them, it doesn't bother me really, like I could still play them, but I wouldn't necessarily go out and search for a guitar with a neck like that. For me, I think, uh, like the majority of you out there, probably a, a comfortable C. I like the V shape. Uh, I do have some guitars that have D-shaped ne necks, but as long as they don't have wide shoulders, I don't, I don't like to feel like I'm holding a two by four. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yes, in fact, Casey, Billy doesn't have any problems with tone, that's for sure. 
Everybody's after that Billy Gibbons tone. John says, um, I don't care what brand uh, or gauge of strings are on my guitar. I'm not even sure what's on most of them. Well, you need to know what's on your guitar because then if you restring your guitar eventually, you're going to break a string. What's going to happen? You're going to have to reset your, you know, the neck curvature, the radius and all that kind of stuff. Um, and sometimes even your nut will have to be re-slotted if you're going with higher strings and your guitar was set up with the smaller strings. I've seen, believe it or not guys, I've seen plenty of used guitars being sold where the new, the owner of the guitar, you can see that he clearly didn't understand how guitars work. Uh, they, they had a guitar that they were selling. I wonder why, because he couldn't get the thing to stay in tune probably probably they had jammed like super heavy gauge strings on the nut that was cut for like regular size strings the strings were like sitting above the slots um not even in the slot you know like just sitting above the slot because they didn't fit in the slot well no wonder your guitar is not going to stay in tune and it's not going to play the way you want it's like ridiculous so you know this is why it's important to understand what your guitar currently has. That way when you update your strings, you know that you're putting in strings that will work with the way the guitar is set up. Otherwise, you're gonna to have to do a complete new setup. Uh, Jeff says, watching the rig rundown of Billy Gibbons, the tech said he barely touches the strings. He has so much gain, it's like heavy metal settings on amps. It is. That's the interesting thing about Billy Gibbons. And I did probably watch the same rig rundown Jeff, because I love Billy Gibbons and I love like figuring out how he gets his tone. And there was, there was a lot of secrecy around Billy Gibbons' tone back in the early days. He would be very uh, elusive about what he, what he would be using. A lot of times they were just very small amplifiers that were being mic'd, um, you know, in the back of the stage. Um, but they weren't like huge, huge amps or anything like that. Um, nowadays, I think he plays the magnetone. I think he's endorsed by Magnetone. Very expensive amplifiers. Sound great, but you probably have to sell a kidney or two to be able to afford them. But that's, I think, um, Billy's claim to fame. He has a lot of gain on tap, but he rides the volume to, to get it to be like on the edge of breakup so that he has enough sustain without necessarily having to get fizzy. But there was a period in uh, the ZZ Top album releases where they did get kind of fizzy. I, I, I think the sound was a little bit too over the top. But the early days sounded incredible. Really great, really great tone. Music and Gear says your amp is 85% of your tone. Probably more. Probably more. I mean, you can have the greatest technique, but if you're playing through a crappy amplifier, you know, what are you going to get? It's like having a really expensive stereo system, but skimping out on the speakers, <laughs> you know? So your entire chain is pristine, high-end quality, hi-fi equipment, but your, your speakers suck. You know, that's the analogy I like to use. So guys, we do have a poll question. I hope you guys have seen it. I usually like to put a poll question out every Sunday when I can. So if you guys could answer the poll question, that would be great. We'll take a look at it a little bit later and it ties into the subject of the day. Uh, how do you guys handle uh, not being able to play? Like what if you're on a business trip? What if you're on vacation? and suddenly you have to stop playing for a few days, maybe a few weeks, or God forbid, a few months. Then what do you do? How does it feel? How do you handle that? I tend to, I mean, honestly, I try to take, I try to play guitar every day, try to at least touch a guitar every day, if nothing, if, if nothing else. But I try to um, play regularly, I, not as much as I should be playing, but I try and play regularly. And I think the longest period I've ever stayed without touching a guitar 
was probably about a month or so. But this was a long time ago, uh, which was even tougher for me because at that stage I was I was younger. I was probably 18 at the time and I was playing a heck of a lot of guitar, way more guitar than I'm playing now. And I went to a trip to Europe and it was about a month long. And man, I was getting withdrawal symptoms. I was really getting withdrawal symptoms to the stage where I was like trying to find music stores just so I can go in and play guitar. Uh, I remember actually doing just that. I went in, found a guitar uh, store, a music store, and just uh, was playing to get my fix. And it, you know, the area I was in didn't have a lot of, of shops. Um, unlike today, there's probably way more, but back then there wasn't that many. Um, it was very difficult to find one and uh, man, it felt so good just holding a guitar in my hand again, just smelling the guitars on the racks. You know, they have a smell to them. When you walk in a, a music store, you have a, a specific smell that you can that you can sense, right? So I, I was just walking in there and definitely uh, tried to play as many guitars as I could and tried to stay as long as I could before I got kicked out. <laughs> But that's the longest I think I stayed without playing guitar. I've done shorter stints, you know, a couple days here and there, a week or so. And even now, a week is a lot. A week is a lot. The last time, uh, well, I went to Chicago recently and I was there for about four, four days. And even at that, I was trying to find a music store someplace. Um, I wanted to go to Chicago Music Exchange, but I didn't know that they have a, 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 a visitor policy, like you have to call ahead to book a time slot and they're not open every single day. And the day that I was available, they were not open. So I wasn't able, I wasn't able to go. But next time I'm gonna try and catch, I'm gonna try and get to, get to one of those places. Uh, what about you guys? Time surfing alien says I have to pick it up every day. Yeah, that's a, that's a good habit, man. You know, you, you gotta, you gotta, Stay fresh. You got to play the guitar, man. What's the point if you're not playing guitar? So Dan of New Jersey says, did you see in the US that the SV Marshalls dropped $500? That was a surprise. I didn't see that. But I did I did see that they were they had gone up in price. So where did you see that price, uh, Dan? Is that across the board? Like if I go to Sweetwater, let me check that out. That deserves further investigation. Um, let's take a look. Because I was just saying to myself recently, I'm like, man, those those Studio Vintage Marshalls got, are, got really expensive really fast. So if they did come down in price, that's a good thing. Yeah, you're right. Uh, it says here on the Sweetwater site. Here, let me share this with you guys. On the Sweetwater site here, Studio Vintage, $450 price drop. It's a good time to grab one, man. Was a thousand seven forty nine. Now it's a thousand two. Ha! Might have to grab another one. <laughs> These are great amps, by the way, guys. I really love them. The five star reviews here. A lot of people do like them. I like to look at the reviews when um, when I look at these things because I like to see what people say. Uh, just to see their perspective. Here, some guy here says. Um, Sounds great, OCD tube screamer. Plug your Strat into input two, nice fat cleans, volume for home on two. Tried a little black box in the effects loop, sounded like a kazoo. You don't need that and you really don't need to jump the inputs. Why would anybody want to plug into the high treble side? Maybe you would jump the inputs if you're playing really loud and need a little more treble once again thanks to matthew and sweetwater for the great service well i don't agree with what this guy's saying by the way you want to jump those things you want to jump the inputs trust me 
That's where you get all the tone, dude. If you just go into the high volume, you're getting a lot of highs. The, um, the, the normal gives you all of the bottom. And if you're playing ho at home and you're playing um, lower volumes, you tend to lose some of the, the lows there. That's how I do it. I jumper it. But thanks for bringing that up, man. Is that why? Oh, maybe that's the reason. Paul has a point here. Paul's saying Marshall has a totally new US distributor. So maybe they're knocking off the, the price is dropping because they don't have to go through hoops now shipping from the UK. Maybe that's where the cost savings comes in. That makes sense. A thousand two is the right price. A thousand seven was too high, man. Imagine a thousand seven USD plus tax. Wow. That's a lot. I wouldn't want to pay that much, but a thousand two is a sweet spot, I think. DMAX says, I've seen other Marshalls at lower prices also. DSL 40s are down a couple hundred dollars in Canada. I think it's across the board then. So Dan, uh, you have the SV20H like I have, which is here. Uh, I recently noticed an issue with mine and I have to investigate further. I, I suspect I may have a bad tube in uh, V1 or V2. The reason I suspect that, and Dan, maybe you can qualify this for me on yours. Do you jumper your inputs, Dan? Because I usually jumper my inputs on that particular amp. And recently I noticed that um, if I play with the volumes, one and two, the high volume, I can keep it a, a fairly low, I could keep it fairly low on the scale and it's pretty loud. Whereas the low volume, I have to crank up quite a bit, like to nine or 10 even, before I hear a, a difference. And that was, and it wasn't like that before. So I'm suspecting I may have a bad tube in that amplifier. I do have a tube tester, so I'm gonna be checking that. But Dan, Dan, if you can perhaps do a little quick test for me, jumper and see how high you have to put the normal volume to be on par with the, the high the high volume. Because I, if I remember correctly, they were pretty much the same on the scale and now they're out of whack. But I, other than that, I don't hear um, much noise. And do you get a lot of uh, hiss happening? Because I do hear quite a bit of hiss on mine. That's why I suspect a bad tube. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna be looking at that and, and investigating further. Thank God I have a tube tester. Makes things a whole lot easier. Uh, Daniel says, in the 70s, it seemed every band I saw playing in Canada was using Trainer. Trainer's still popular there. I mean, Trainer's like a Canadian band, a Canadian brand. It's Trainer was kind of the equivalent of Marshall, like a Canadian Marshall. If you couldn't afford Marshall, you would probably get a Trainer. Uh, there, there's people still playing Trainers. I've never owned one. I've never had the uh, desire to own one, but I've seen a lot of people with them. I think if you had the dough, you would generally just go for, for Marshall. Paul says, um, Tony, all the prices will drop. Marshall are giving the dealers a few months to clear their inventory. Why are they doing that, Paul? Do you know what's going on? Are they uh, introducing something new, maybe? Well, it's good news for anybody trying to grab one. Now's the time. Grab when the grabbing's good, guys, because the, the prices, it's not every day you get low prices going, you know, north. Usually the price is going north, not south. So when the prices do go south, take advantage. Yeah, so Dan, if you don't get a hiss and this and this volumes are fairly equal, then I, I do suspect a bad tube. So I think I have one lying around, so I have some extra tubes here. So I'll, I'll do uh, I'll do a quick swap later on and see if that fixes the issue. Hey Zach, good morning. 
Um, Surfing by says, sorry for the late question, but which guitar is that? Ah, oh, no, no problem. This is a, uh, it's a Fender. Um, this is a Road Worn Strat. Road Worn Series. But this is an older one. So I joke about that sometimes because some people don't like the Road Worn aspect. And they're like, oh, you should actually, you know, play the guitar and wear it naturally. But the thing is, this is a, a really old one that I bought used which um, is, te is technically old now. So a lot of the actual wear and tear that you're seeing on the, on the um, guitar is actually real. Some of it isn't, but some of it is. And I like the thin skin on these. I like the, the thin skin paint. It just feels like a, an old pair of jeans. Uh, my knees hurt says, Tony, what Telecaster is that behind you? The yellow looking one. This guy? This guy? Yeah, that's a 52 reissue. Strat. Uh, Telecaster. Fender 52 reissue. Uh, Zach says, uh, I was in Montreal on Monday. I was there for a wrestling show. WWE was at the Bell Center. I heard about that, Zach. Was it a good turnout? Was a lot of people there? We had a, I think, I believe Beyonce was doing a show here also recently. And there was some scuffle happening in the audience that uh, landed on YouTube. Bunch of girls just brawling it out there in their thongs in the audience. <laughs> kind of weird. But... Um, Anything could happen. Yeah, tubes are expensive now, man. Uh, I'm glad I still have a whole bunch. I have a, a bag full of tubes here. If you buy them new now, they're, they they went up. They went south also. Everything's going south in terms of the pricing, man. Uh, so it's not a, it's not a whole lot of fun. I tried to. Luckily, I haven't had to to change too many tubes. With my um, with my tube amps that I have here. Uh, Music and Gear says COVID. A lot of bad tubes made during that time. When was your uh, Marshall amp made? I th that's a good question. I don't know exactly when it was made. Uh, when did I buy it? I think it was just before COVID. I think it was before COVID. Yeah, Casey, the, the Highway 1 strats are great. If ever you want to make yourself like um, an SRV style guitar, you know, aged uh, relic, those Highway 1 bodies are the perfect ones to use for that because that they have thin nitro finishes. So that, you know, they, they're thin. So they, they, they don't chip, they just, they ding. And uh, they look even better when they get older. Yeah, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of uh, wrestling fans here in Montreal, Zach, as you witnessed. Paul says uh, Dave Friedman said the contract with the old distributor ran out, and even Marshall felt they were gouging. New contract lets Marshall dictate dictate the price, so that means better prices on Marshalls. Fantastic. That's great news. See, it's good to have connections, people in the know. You know, I, I've noticed that recently uh, Gibson is still trying to push the Gibson amps that they came out with. And uh, I think they came out with another version, which is a, a, a two-channel version now. I just want to tell Gibson to stop it. I mean, no, no offense, if anybody here has one of those amps, but I, I think those amps sound, they don't sound great. And that's being uh, modest, being mild, holding back <laughs> for the price that they're selling for. Um, I don't like them. And I was holding out, you know, I was hoping that uh, now that Gibson is in partnership, now that they own Mesa Boogie, 
I was hoping that the first amplifier that they were going to come out with was going to be something stellar. But they, they just basically released this throwback Gibson amp, which, I don't know, man, it's not doing it for me. So now that they released the two-channel version, still not doing it for me. Am I the only one here? Am I alone? Guys? Anyone? <laughs> Hello? Is this thing on? <laughs> Just kidding. And by the way, not for anything, but when is Mesa Boogie going to come out with a new amplifier? What are they waiting for? I think uh, Gibson had them busy on this Gibson amplifier because they, they should have come up with a new amp by now. Surferby says, I love Road Worn and Relics. I've uh, built three. I'm clumsy, so I don't have to worry about dings. That's the thing. When you have these Road Worn guitars, you feel free. Because if you, you know, bump, accidentally bump on the side of your desk or something like that, like, you don't care. I don't even look. You know, if I bump it, I don't even check, oh, what happened there? You know? Whereas if I bump my core uh, PRS guitar, Damn right I'm going to look, you know. Last thing I would want to do is put a ding or a chip in that guitar, you know. So it's funny how it's liberating to have these road-worn strats and other guitars. Like, um, I think I have another uh, road-worn Telecaster that I kind of built. The purple, tel the purple Telecaster there is kind of made to be road-worn eventually. Um, I built that one. So I'm not that worried about it. But uh, there are some guitars that I do. I do check. Casey, I agree with you 100%, man. Casey says, new Gibson amp. Might as well buy a monoprice 15-watt tube amp, in my opinion. I think so. I've, I've tried the monoprice amp. I did a review of it. And when I watched the reviews, it sounds like a monoprice. And I don't think the quality is much better, to be honest with you. But um, the price is going up. Yeah, Shane, Gibson tends to do that. They tend to mothball brands that they buy. Hopefully, hopefully they know what they have and they won't mess with it too much. And uh, Mesa will be releasing some cool stuff. Hey, maybe they're working on something big. You know, maybe they're taking their time and the next one's going to be a big one. We'll see. Music and Gear says Gibson amps just like the old ones. They didn't cut. It. They didn't cut it then or now. Other amps were better and cheaper. Uh, John says my first electric is a Strat copy I bought in 1987, black poly that has a couple of small chips and a million scratches and dings all over it. Doesn't look relic, but does look well used. But I I, I agree uh, with. Um, You know, Presley was saying earlier that um, poly road worn strats are, or, or guitars in, in general, are, are embarrassing. I agree. You can't properly relic a, a guitar that has a poly finish on it because it chips. It doesn't. It doesn't ding. It doesn't wear. It just chips. It doesn't look right. I've seen them a million times, you know, and it's embarrassing when somebody's even trying to sell one, you know, and, and actually putting in the description relic. <laughs> I don't agree. Uh, Billy Bear says, says, guys, I promised myself not to buy another guitar this year, but I couldn't help it. So I pulled the plug on a, on a, a, a Fesley. Sunburst LP350 for 159 bucks US dollars. Anybody, uh, any, anyone, anybody, any thoughts on this one? Uh, I don't even know what that is. So let me, let me look that up, dude. Fesley LP350. All right, let me, let me take a look. Curious now. 
Where did you where did you get this? Where did you buy it? Did you buy it directly from their website? Uh, here, let's take a look at it together, guys. So this is the Fesley. 350, is this the one that you're talking about? 179, what are the specs on this thing? Okay, there's a couple of reviews. So, you know, it doesn't look that bad. I kind of like the sunburst one, I like this one. It looks like they have, uh, are those uh, powered active speakers on this? It's funny how they have to this they have to describe how the the switch works as if we don't already know I mean it looks pretty cool I like the neck I like the inlays I've seen way worse for uh, that kind of money interesting all right well that's cool I'm glad you like it dude I always, I always had um, an issue with the name of the uh, the treble switch. You know when they put re rhythm and treble? I mean, why would they say rhythm and treble? Why wouldn't it be bass and treble? You know, or why wouldn't it be rhythm and lead? Why would they mix rhythm and treble? That's a mistake. <laughs> I don't know if Gibson came up with that or somebody else came up with that before Gibson. But I think that's a mistake. So Billy ordered it on Amazon, but he didn't he did order the Sunburst one. Hey man, it looks cool, dude. Let us know. Did you already get it? You already got it? Surfer by says, I love my non relics. Also, I just don't like having to do drop fills. Poly is the worst because, because it's, it's, it's child like China. I don't get the last part of what you were saying there, but I understand what you mean about the drop fills. Gene says, relic is for posers. <laughs> I guess I'm a poser then. Who knew? Presley says uh, no, intentional poly relics are lame, but well-used old scratch dinged and chipped can look totally appropriate and cool. Yeah, I guess so. You know, there's always the question of what do you do? If you have a nice guitar with a poly finish and you chip it, do you try to fix it or you just leave it? I don't, I don't like the poly finishes where you see, let's say it's a red guitar and you see there's a big chunk missing and you see the the light wood underneath. Uh, that doesn't look good. But then I've seen people trying to fix poly and that doesn't look good either. <laughs> Quite a co conundrum. Dan says, Gibson has a history of killing good brands. They buy, I'm concerned. Caesar has the same mentality as Henry. I don't think so, man. I think they know that Mesa has a good reputation. They were a successful, they're a success, success, I can't speak, successful company. Why would they want to mess with it? You know, and they do need a, they do need an amp brand unless they're trying to get rid of Mesa just to up the uh the gibson models you know maybe the mandate is to bring out a complete line of gibson amps i'm not sure we'll find out though shane likes the look of poly finishes better for the environment than your and your health as well um if you're eating it i think it's just as bad <laughs> 
if you're playing it, I don't think you need to worry so much. Um, Presley says, Fesley is a total bite off me, guys. Uh, what do you mean, Presley? What do you mean it's a bite off you? Paul says, Fesley make good stuff. Most is solid with the Donner name on it. <laughs> Wayne says, F the Fesley, get the Presley. I like that. I like that. Wayne is creative today. Wayne, do you work in marketing by any chance? Music and Gear says, love the show, Tony, but have uh, but have guitar set up that has to be done before customer pick up at 6 p.m. Dude, you get, customers come first, man. No worries. It's all good, man. Saul Goodman. It's coming on Friday, so let us know. Let us know. I see what you mean, chips like China. Patrick says, I bought the Strymon Timeline on Reverb. <laughs> I know what you mean, Patrick. Reverb. $400 mint. I have so many delays. I need to go to an AA meetup. So, Patrick, generally people will go overboard with the, with the distortion and overdrive pedals. You're going overboard with the Reverb. It's cool. Hey, Strymon is a good buy, man. It's a good, it's a good, um, I, I hear nothing but good, good things about the Strymon. So now that you brought in the $400 Strymon, what's on the chopping block, Patrick? What are you getting rid of? Or is that part of why you need to go to an AA meeting? Because you can't get rid of anything if you're like me. Casey says, uh, chip scratches and dings in guitars are love marks. Yeah, man. When guitars get old, they have mojo. You know, it looks good. I like the, the the look of an old guitar. I like when, you know, the the metal starts to tarnish and you can see that somebody sweat on that guitar, you know. It's okay. That's fine. Gene says, I worry more about how it plays. Looks be nothing. SRV guitar looks like crap to most non-players it's true it's true i mean anything and i don't want to get into the relic debate here i mean there's clearly two sides of the fence people some people love them some people don't you know i love the feel i love the feel i love the playability on this guitar and i don't mind the look so i'm happy but i understand it's not for everyone um, my knees hurt says I got one of those Kramer Beretta specials specifically to do a fun paint job. I have no idea how to remove the existing paint fire. Maybe, uh, you can actually use a heat gun if you want to remove the paint, just heat it up a little bit and use, um, one of those paint spatulas, you know, painters use these little really thin bendy spatulas. You can just stick them right underneath, um, Stick them right underneath the, the paint and it'll peel right off. But why would you want to, why would you want to peel it off? Like, why don't you just, um, spray, um, you know, uh, a sealer coat, an undercoat, and then spray directly on, on the paint that's already there. Just a good primer. I would save myself the headaches and just scratch it up a little bit with some, um, with some sandpaper so that the primer sticks and then just spray right over the primer. Save yourself a lot of headaches. Randy says, why would anyone pay for a relic guitar? It would be like paying to have your wife disfigured before the wedding. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's funny, man. That's funny. Dude, it's a question of feel. It feels good. That's, you know, like I said, either you like it or you don't. And I respect both sides of the fence. I'm neutral here, guys. I have both. Rally guitars are like buying new pants with holes in them already. Not my thing, but to each their own. I understand, man. Not everybody likes those those ripped jeans. I don't like them either, to be honest with you. But if you go to the store, you know, the young crowd are buying them by the, you know, by the carriage full. And they're paying a lot of money for them too. The jeans I can handle. I can make holes in my own jeans. Presley says, my latest build is a late placid, Lake Placid Blue Nitro Thin Skin Mustang that will rel uh, relic easily. Yeah, man. I think it will, and it's going to look great. Uh, so Patrick says he has a Strymon El Capistan Black Version V1 for sale. All right, Patrick. Cool, man. So uh, are you going to be putting that on uh, Facebook Marketplace, Kijiji? Where are you going to be putting that? Just so I can help you maybe sell it. If you're, anybody's in the... Uh, I, I assume, Patrick, you're in the Montreal area. So if anybody's interested, hit up Patrick. My knee search says, how long does it take for Nitro to start to crack or relic? It really depends. Um... It can happen really quickly and it can happen even if you don't want it to happen i have another strat behind me there on my uh on my rack that is uh cracking up as we speak it's cracking up as we speak <laughs> let me grab it i'll show you what i mean give me a sec and i and i didn't mean for that one to to crack up on me at all or anything, but hold on a sec. So this guitar, this Strat, is also nitro, or lacquer. And you'll see, if I hold it in the light, you see all these, um, well, you might not be able to see it easily, uh, but there's a whole bunch of like, I'm trying to get the light, there you go, you can see it there. You see that? You see all those lines? That started happening on its own. And I have some in the back as well. See those? Um, I don't know why it happened, but it did. And these are, I can't do anything about it. But it still plays great. I, I don't mind playing the guitar even if it has these little things happening in it. A lot of people say you can get that to happen if you heat up the guitar and then cool it suddenly. A lot of people, that's what they'll end up doing with the guitars just to make it, like to make the, the paint shrink so it cracks. I didn't do any of that. It just happened naturally. So, so how long does it take? Sometimes natural uh, nitro never cracks. It doesn't mean just because you have an old nitro guitar that it will automatically crack. You know, if you're putting it in the back of your car and it's hot, you know, then you take it out of your car in the winter time. That could have happened with this guitar. 
I could have went to a gig, a rehearsal. Maybe I had my heating on in my car in the winter time, so the so the guitar was hot, and then I took it out, and it was cold, and could have happened could have happened then. Uh, relics are the guitar version of pineapple on pizza. Everyone has their preference, which is fine. But why are they sticking their nose into how other like others like theirs? I don't know. Good question. I don't like pineapples on pizza, by the way. You know, I guarantee you most of the guitars that you see uh, these rock stars using today are artificially reliced. Most of the, uh, the artists out there don't like to have brand spanking new guitars. Um, and they're paying people to do this on their guitars, including Bill Billy Gibbons. Uh, let's see, let's see. Paul says all my guitars are lightly reliced because it's 20, they're 20 years old. I lost my shoes, Dan. We don't we don't wear shoes in in Canada. He says, I have a 15-year-old Les Paul and it still looks brand new. If you take care of your guitar, there's no reason why they shouldn't look brand new. But it's kind of hard to play a guitar on a regular basis and keep them looking brand new. This 335 that I have here when I bought it was looking brand new. But, you know, all of the hardware on it is already all tarnished. Casey says, I've got guitars that look new and guitars that are beat all to heck and everything in between. Love them all. I'm the same. Thank you. Same thing here. My knees hurt says, my guitars never leave home. So they're going to be in good condition for a long time. It could very well be that the wood on the guitar was not dried long enough. Could be. Uh, my niece says I spray nitro weekly. I've never seen it crack. Maybe I'm spraying on metal, so maybe that's why. I think um, metal tends to not shrink or expand very much compared to wood. So Patrick is in. Uh, he's going to be putting on Facebook Marketplace, Montreal or South Shore. So, so if anybody's interested in uh, a used reverb pedal. Hit up Patrick. Yeah, I don't believe it uh, either, Paul. Hard to believe pineapple on pizza was invented in the 60s by Canada's mother's pizza. I don't, I don't, no, it's not, that's not right. That's not right. Tony, I believe I can get the SV20 for around $1,600 Canadian. Uh, thoughts and thoughts on green back speaker, 25 watts. Um, if you can get it brand new for 1006 that's not bad. I've seen some used ones uh, floating around. Probably can get those for a little bit less expensive. Um, I like the uh, Celestian speakers. I like the 65s. But green backs are fine. I prefer the 65s. <laughs> Wayne says, I love to build homemade pizzas with large shrimp and pineapple. Dude, if you're Italian, there's really only a few ingredients that are allowed to go on a pizza. It's sauce, good quality cheese, and I'm not talking mozzarella, a little bit of basil, and that's about it. That's all you really need. And maybe a little olive oil on top. That's it. That's all you need. 
three ingredients you know you can yeah you can put pepperoni you can put sausage you can put but don't make me catch you putting pineapple on your pizza don't do it that'll piss me off <laughs> Hey, shall we take a look at the um, poll question or should we jump to a couple of other things that I had on the agenda I wanted to talk about today? I'm getting hungry. Me too, man. Make it a double time surfing alien. Where do you order your pizzas from? Please don't tell me Domino's or something like that. <laughs> Domino's is a no-no I don't like Domino's pizzas oh by the way guys last week I talked about um, the fact that uh, some Led Zeppelin video had emerged on the internet uh, if, if you guys remember there was a, a video that was actually shot in Montreal uh, that popped up on YouTube. Then there was another one a couple days later. There's another one. I don't know what's going on, but all these videos, all these, all this footage of Led, Led Zeppelin in the early age, early days are starting to pop up on YouTube. Uh, there's a new one that was previously unseen that popped up that was shot in Ohio in 1975. And, um, it was actually discovered in the archives of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I don't know how it ended up there, but it's actually on YouTube now. So if you actually search for it, you actually can see that footage. And it features Led Zeppelin. I think they're playing, it's about nine, nine or 10 minutes. It's not extremely long, but they're playing um, Rock and Roll. The song remains the same. Rain song, no quarter, how many more times? Um, It's really cool that some of this stuff is still popping up. Hopefully more will pop up. I love watching this stuff. I can't get enough. If any of you have any footage, man, now's the time. Put it on YouTube, dude. Um, I wonder how much, how much more we'll actually see. The other thing that was really cool is the, uh, the 57 Gretsch that belonged to uh, Randy Bachman, the 78 Gretsch. And uh, we all heard the story of that one, finding its way back to Randy. Now over 200 of Randy's guitars are up for auction. Um, I guess Randy's getting ready for his, you know, retirement, his nest egg. It's going to be auctioned in New York's uh, Hard Rock Ca Cafe, May 29 and 30. So if you have some scratch and you want to pick up some cool guitars that uh, belong to Randy, cir circle May 29 and 30th, head over to the Hard Rock Cafe in New York and um, there will be 200 guitars being auctioned off. Including, by the way, his 59 Les Paul. This is the, the guitar that he used to write uh, American Woman on. Nice 59 Les Paul. I wonder how much it's going to go for. It's funny how a lot of these guys are doing this now. I think that that Les Paul alone is estimated to be worth between $200,000 and $400,000. Just so you know. So you don't want to show up there with, um, you know, just a few bucks. Make sure you, you go prepared. Paul says there's a black and white Hendrix video uh, that also showed up and the sound is beyond killer. Oh, I got I to gotta look at, got to look for that one. I haven't seen that one. Hey, Gear Junkie, nice to see you, man. No chicken on pizza. No, I agree with Time Surfing Alien. No, chi no chicken. No.
<laughs> Randy says, for any that are concerned, I promise, I promise we'll lose no sleep based on my views today. Thank you. <laughs> John says shrimp, pineapple, thumbs down. Disclaimer, this only applies to my pizza. Go ahead and put the pineapple on yours. <laughs> Boney aped it, he says. Thank God there's no dominoes in your area, time surfing alien. Thank God for that. Small miracles. And you're right, Eddie. Uh, it's hard to find a PRS that has a ton of wear play wear and looks relic people seem to take care of their prs guitars you're absolutely right and that's the funny thing is like it's a it's a two-sided thing right it's like you you have people that don't mind having relic guitars but don't touch their prs you're absolutely right i have i have yet to see a relic prs guitar at least relic on purpose actually Scratch that. I did see one. There was some crazy YouTube, YouTuber out there at one point that did just that. He took a PRS guitar and he tried to relic it. And it looks like a, a monkey's ass. Doesn't look good at all. Basically ruined a perfectly good guitar, in my opinion. At least if he knew how to do it right, then it wouldn't be so bad. Patrick says the new Fractal firmware, firmware does pretty good with the FM3. A lot of new improvements. I wish I could get my hands on the FM3 Turbo. I heard about that uh, firmware. I was hoping that a firmware would come up for the FM9, uh, but they just had one recently. So I'm pretty happy with the FM9 and the FM3. I hear great things about also. And a lot of people are loving that firmware update. <laughs> Dan says, pizza's like sex. Even if it's bad, it's still pretty good. I guess. Yeah, I heard about that, uh, Paul. Randy has over 300 Gretsch guitars. And you know how he got all those Gretsch guitars? After he lost his number one, he went on a, a rampage trying to replace it, trying to find one that was just as good. And he accumulated over 300 of them. And still was lusting over his number one. So what does that tell you? All guitars are not the same. Has anyone watched Luca? I can't even pronounce the name. Strikangoli's videos? You gotta see him play. Trust me on this one. I'll have to take a look. Zach Myers has a relic PRS strat, maybe, maybe. Is it naturally worn or is it a fake, a fugazi? We won't, we'll never know. It's funny, I saw um, uh, a post on the internet where um, James um, Hatfield of uh, Metallica Got a tattoo on his finger. Um, it looks like an ace, an ace of spades. And apparently he says that he put Lemmy's ashes in the tattoo that he got on his finger. And he says without him, there would have been no Metallica. It says blank, black, black ink mixed with a pitch, pinch of his cremation ashes that were so graciously given to me. What do you guys think of that? Interesting, uh, to say the least. <laughs> it's funny because um, uh, now that the Let It Be video is coming out, uh, apparently the they're restoring the Let It Be video or they restored the Let It Be video from the Beatles, so you're going to be able to see that in all, all its full glory. Apparently, the at the same time, the person that returned Paul McCartney's Hofner bass, because as you guys know, it went missing. Somebody found it. They returned it to Paul. Paul was gracious enough to give the person a six-figure 
reward for the base. And I think that's pretty much fair, wouldn't you say? Six figures, I mean, they could definitely have gotten more than six figures if that ended up being sold somewhere. But it's kind of um, difficult to sell such an, uh, an iconic base. But I mean, what's six figures to Paul? You know, chump change even. You know, that that's his, his pizza allowance for a month maybe, you know. So whoever uh, did that, good karma brings back and they, uh, they got something good out of it. Clean even, didn't have to worry about it. Uh, didn't Kiss put their own blood in the ink for their comics? I heard, I heard about something like that. And didn't like, uh, was it Lady Gaga or something that put a drop of her blood in, in her perfume mix or something like that? I mean, thanks, but I, I wouldn't want to have cross-contamination of whatever these rock stars have in their bloods, blood bloodstream, especially guys like, uh, you know, Lemmy. And not for anything, but, you know, Lady Gaga's probably not that clean either. <laughs> <laughs> that's all I need is to contract hepatitis after spraying some perfume on or something like that anyways that's just me being careful um, by the way if you ever you're interested there's a really cool video out on the internet um, there's a woman called Nina Di, Gre Di Gregorio and she's playing a version of Van Halen's Eruption on a seven string fretted violin crazy uh, you guys have to see this so after the video is over not now after the video is over you can google Nina Di Gregorio and check out her um Eruption 7 string uh, solo on violin. Yes, indeed, Patrick, you're right. I forgot about uh, Steve. Uh, I forgot about Steve. He did the same on his DNA guitar. Yes, I remember that. That was a cool guitar, by the way. The DNA guitar with the glow in the dark inlays and paint and everything. Pretty cool. I was lusting for that guitar. Like, I'm not a big Ibanez fan, but. I love the way that the paint looked uh, looked on that, and I love the inlays on the uh, the fretboard. You know, with the lines going through and everything, it was really nice. But I think that guitar was like I don't know, eighteen thousand bucks or something like that. Should we look at the poll uh, the poll question? Let's look at the poll question, shall we? All right, let me, let me get to it. If you guys don't know or didn't have an opportunity to answer the poll question to th this, today, well, you missed your opportunity, <laughs> but I'm gonna share it with you anyways. All right, so uh, on our channel, if ever you're looking for the poll question, there's a community section. That's where the poll, poll questions end up. Uh, yeah, there was about 144 votes on this one, so most of you probably answered by now. So the question was, uh, what is the longest you've ever gone without playing your guitar? And the choices were one hour, one day, one week, one month, one year. So I'm going to say the longest is for me is probably about a month. But that was a long time ago. So the number one answer, believe it or not, is one year. A lot of you have taken a, hi a hiatus from guitar playing for as much as one year. I find that hard to believe. How can you stay away from your guitar for a year? Wow. But hey, it's great that you guys came back to it after a year. But I'm surprised by that. I would have thought it would be way less. So that's the number one answer, one year. Number two answer is one week. And I, I, I would, I get that. A lot of people, I mean, I mean, I could probably stay off of my guitar for about a week, you know, 
uh, without too much trouble. I don't like to do it. Um, but that's one week is 31% of you. The next most popular answer is one month. I fall into that category. One month is the length of time I've stayed away. And next is 10% of you is one day. And only 1% of you is one hour. So somebody that's very dedicated out there, I don't know who that is, but one of you <laughs> is very dedicated. If you can't stay away from your guitar for more than an hour. Uh, so somebody here says, broke the wrist of my left fret hand this winter. I've played daily for over 40 years and I like to pick a guitar up every day. If just to bang out a few power chords, it was really sucky and now it healed weird and I have a deformity caused by the bone shortening. It's been a month since taking off my brace and I'm playing daily again. I have no stamina and first position chords are difficult to do. Uh, hell, hell of if I can't make it work this way, I, I will just, what? Hell of if I can't make it work with this way, I will just, and stayed there. I don't know, did I miss something? Oh, become a great slide player. Hit the send button by accident, I see, okay. Play Or play the piano. Well, slide guitar is not easy, and I suck at slide. So yeah, if, you know, if you, you're having issues with your hands, Slide is an option, but Django Reinhardt only had three fingers and he played extremely well. So don't give up, man. A lot of you, um, you gotta take care of your hands, dudes. Gotta take care of those, those fingers too. Hey Max, no worries. Thank you for joining the party. Take care, surfer, bye. <laughs> John has a good point. He says one hour, so they sleep no more than 55 minutes at a time. Maybe they sleep with the guitar. Think about it. Paul says, Tony, go back to school as an adult and you do not even have half the time needed for homework and study. It's not a choice. Yeah, I agree with you, man. It is hard. A lot of, uh, a lot of our time is uh, split up into so many other things. And it's very hard to find time these days. Everybody's vying for our time and attention, it seems. Uh, someone else says, I play three plus shows per week in the early, early 80s. I have to admit, between 1989 and 2000, I didn't play at all. Uh, have been addicted since then. Welcome to the club. <laughs> How many of you travel with your guitar? Like if you're gonna be travel traveling somewhere, you're gonna take a guitar with you? Like if I had a, a decent way of, of packing a guitar, I'd take a guitar with me. Somebody else says, went without a guitar for one week while in the hospital with COVID, not fun. I know, it's like, it's funny because when you're down and out, you have time to play but you can't play, you know? Someone else here says 15 years in 1981, our band signed a record contract, then promptly broke up, going our separate ways uh, into higher education, real life work and families, health problems and depression set in. 15 years later, in my 30s, younger guys I met invited me to join their band as combined PR slash publicist and second guitarist to promote their seven inch single and positive interview photo shoot in the N, uh, M -E, NME, most important UK music weekly paper at the time. Within weeks, the band broke up. Again, both times, the disastrous problems was the lead singer and their mental health problems and drug habits. Uh, but ever since then, I joined back up with some of my original band for just a bunch of older uh, blokes enjoying playing occasional charity benefit gigs until the COVID lockdown put a stop to that. Oh well, 2024. 
the guitars come out for a strum every now and then uh, to see if my fingers still work properly. And that's the key, man, just to keep at it. To me, music is a lifelong journey. Um, you know, I'm not gonna be, I'm never gonna be the best guitarist out there. I'm pretty much still gonna be a hack. Uh, at my age, I can't expect to get that much better unless I really honker down and decide to change the way I do things today. But it's still very pleasurable for me to enjoy the guitars that I have. And, you know, collecting guitars is, is, a, is a pleasure for me. Playing my various guitars and instruments is a pleasure for me. And I always said guitars and playing music is way less expensive than therapy. And I do believe it's the best therapy. So if you guys don't already know, playing guitars will alleviate anxiety, will alleviate depression, overthinking, all these things and just stimulate the chemicals in your brain, the happy chemicals, the natural happy chemicals in your brain and uh, will make you feel great. So, you know, it's up to you, but if you can play your guitar at least 20, 30 minutes a day, every day, you'll be a happier person, I guarantee you. That's just my two cents, take it for what it's worth. All right, guys, I think we're gonna wrap it up. I think that's it for today. I've been talking about an hour and a half and you know, we still have lots, lots and lots and lots we can talk about, but we'll keep some for the next Sunday. I appreciate all of you guys that turned out for today's show. I appreciate all the great comments and all the thumbs up. I appreciate those as well. Stay tuned for whatever I'm going to be posting next on my channel as well. There's going to be other videos that are going to be popping up this week and you should uh, definitely stop by and take a look at those. Please circle the date for next Sunday and join us again. If you have anything you want to talk about, take note of it and next Sunday you can bring it up and we can share that together. Um, <laughs> Max says, hey, is that a new Fender Strat 1958? I wish it was. It's not a 58. Not even close. All right, guys, have a great rest of your Sunday. Thank you for coming by. I do appreciate you guys. Dan, I gave the Princeton upgrade uh, update at the beginning of the show. Um, I mentioned that it is still in the works and I made a pinky promise to everyone that I'm gonna be finishing up that build before the end of May. Uh, I had so many other things that I've been trying to take care of, but it's definitely on my list. I know a lot of you are waiting for that. Guarantee you there'll be a video out before the end of May that I'll be playing that that particular amplifier guaranteed. All right Thank you guys. Have a great great Sunday great rest of the week. Stay safe. Be well. Go play your guitar Talk to you soon